Hello and welcome to the Aero Anglia hangar, the maintenance organisation based at Elmser Airfield in Suffolk. And as you can see, India Victor is up on jacks and today they're taking off one of the wings to carry out a repair. My Piper Arrow is in the hangar for its annual maintenance. Every year, these certified aeroplanes go through a very thorough checkover, and I'm glad they do. I'm going to take the flat off then. We have a problem with my starboard wing, and it's going to need some serious work doing to it. The wing itself will have to come off, and I'm here to watch that, and we'll come back to that in a moment. I left India Victor with the team here last week, and they've been working hard getting all the scheduled tasks done. Typically, the first job on an annual is to remove the aircraft's cowlings. This is a first chance for the engineers to look for anything nasty that wants to make itself obvious to the naked eye. With the spark plugs removed, the engine's compressions are checked. One by one, the cylinders are pressurised with compressed air up to 80 psi. The propeller is turned, which moves the piston, to see the pressure that the cylinder retains. A gauge measures for any leakages. The compression ratio is a good indicator of engine health. Another important indicator of engine health is the oil filter. It's carefully removed from the engine. The canister is opened The filter material is cut from the casing using a hacksaw. And then it can be closely examined for any metal particulates that the engine might have been generating. Metal in the oil is a strong indicator that the engine is wearing down. The magnetos are timed. The spark plugs cleaned. Their gaps measured. And the spark tested. These are just the basic starting tasks for the annual. An important part of the process is to keep track of all the components that need to be checked at different intervals, service bulletins, airworthiness directives. As the certifying engineer, that's Aidan's job. Well, I've come into Aidan's uh, office for a cup of tea and um, reason being, you were very keen for, for us to know about the kind of research and paperwork that has to be done when an aircraft comes in for maintenance to check that there are yeah. Whether you know what service bulletins or airworthiness directives are applicable and, and due to, to occur, how do you do that? Right, when we first see an aeroplane, it's usually a bit more complicated, unless we've got very good records. But well, we subscribe to ATP for EASA and FAA airworthiness directives, which is mostly what's applicable to your Part 21 aircraft. We also have to check the CAA website now because and CAP 747 because we're now out of EASA and the CAA are producing some of their own ADs, one of which is similar to an FAA one but applicable to your SPAR. Of the 60 odd ADs that are, may or may not be applicable, anything which is both applicable and recurring gets transferred to a spreadsheet there which forms part of the maintenance programme. As well as ADs we have uh, component lives and it's just easier to track them on Excel, so that's what we do, component lives and odd service bulletins. So what sort of things have we got to do, that, that you've picked out from the research that we've got to do this time? Right, if I enter your new flying hours into here, which I think is 3006 from the logbook. I'll memory. take, I'll, that sounds about Three, right. Three, <laughs> double O. Oh right, six. so that does the calculation. It should update 
And things which have gone red here, so we've got GR20 forks, you know, about alternator brushes, which I think Jonathan's done. done. That, yeah. We haven't got any applicable ADs this time, but we do need to have a quick look at the um, one which is, because it's a new to us aeroplane, one on the wing spar. We, there's a calculation to do each year for factored service hours. We'll probably add that into here as it's never been done yet. And there's some red items on here because we've never seen the aeroplane. We've got forward and aft wing attachment fittings, which we'll look at this time. In situ inspection of control cables, which is easy to do now, they're all slackened off. And rudder bar inspection. It's not so much due this time. We've got stabilator attached fittings. That's an old Piper service bulletin. And it's, you know, this is interesting because if you're an owner, you could, it looks like this might be a light um, annual for ADs and SBs. We caught up with yours a little bit on the six month. Did you? We changed the vac pump and we caught up with right. a few. Which but you could, as an owner, you could find yourself being, you know, stung with quite a bit of work being, having to be yeah, done. Yeah, I mean, we do occasionally find that we get aeroplanes where a load of stuff becomes due at once. And, and by and law, by law, this has to be done at these, airworthiness, yeah. by these intervals, otherwise you can't sign the certificate. Basically. An airworthiness directive is mandatory. So but how much time do you spend doing all of this then? It, how, long would it how long is it taking you to prepare this? Initially, thing? Initially, when we first see an aeroplane, if two of you do it, one person gets the records and goes through it, and one person starts typing and entering, you can generally, on a simpler aeroplane, do it in the morning. Right. So it's a half day's work then. Yeah, once it's up and running, yeah. um, it's really not too bad as things, if you, as long as you religiously update everything as it's due and done. Um, I think on an annual overall, we allow about a day for paperwork right from the beginning to preparing the work pack to writing it up to the certification renewal of the arc and everything else so it's not all nuts and bolts and it's oil not all nuts and bolts and oil, no. <laughs> there's some admin to do as there's well a, there's a yeah. there's a little bit to do they're almost ready to take the wing off but before they do that john fills me in on some more of the tasks completed during the annual inspection the standard annual inspection side of things um, we've had a look at your exhaust system the turbo, in particular, um, needs to be carefully inspected because any leaks there can burn a hole in your firewall, which isn't good news. Underneath these cabin heat exchangers as well, obviously if there's any cracks or perforations in the exhaust there, you'll be getting carbon monoxide into the cabin. So that's all stripped, these removed and inspected and pressure tested. We've done your compression checks. That all good? Obviously, they are all good. Yeah, yeah, all fine. Um, where they were before, or slightly down Why on do where they were is? before. It, they do vary. They're never exactly the same. And the whole idea of doing a compression check every year or every 150 hours, depending on what you do first, is to get an idea of a trend. So just because they're, if one was 74 last time we did it, and this month or this year it's 70, doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna carry on going down. But if we see after three or four different compression checks that they're all tending to go down, it gives you an indication that the engine's starting to um, suffer. And you keep a log of that every time. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's recorded every time. And we can hear when we do the compression check, um, if there's an exhaust valve that's starting to burn, so the exhaust valve seat yeah. isn't right, yeah. you can hear it yeah. coming out past the exhaust valve. Right. So we, we can get an idea of what's happening. And engine. you think, I'm, uh, you were saying to me uh, earlier, you think that I should perhaps run the engine a bit harder? Don't, at, at don't be afraid to run it a bit harder at times. A lot of people are sort of a bit, sort of, you know, scared to yeah. give it a bit of welly, but yeah. it won't hurt. In, well, it will do the opposite. It'll actually help the engine right. to keep well bedded and, yeah. yeah. While we've been talking, the team has been painstakingly removing the wing bolts one by one. And I bet you're curious to know why the starboard wing is coming off. So you're taking off the wing yeah. from India Victor, why is that? Well, on the pre-purchase inspection, uh, Aidan noticed when he climbed up onto the aircraft that there was a creek underneath the wing walk. It's quite common, isn't it? It's quite common and he knew what to look for straight away. and. Sure enough, further inspection, we found some cracking between the ribs and the flutes. Right. It's all very reinforced under there because it's retractable as well. There's a big gear well there, mm. so there has to be a lot of reinforced structure to the skin in that area. 
Unfortunately, the only way to repair that is to um, remove the wing and replace that. And I suppose it's good, you know, it gives us a good chance to have a good old look in there as well, isn't it, Wallace? Well, exactly. And that is another sort of benefit of doing this job is that there are areas that you really can't inspect thoroughly unless you have the wing off. Mm. Um, so it, it, it's, the aeroplane's new to us. We haven't seen it in for an annual before. So it's a good excuse to have a good look yeah. as well. And it needs to be put right anyway. So, yeah. The guys here are used to me poking around the hangar, asking them difficult questions as they work on my pride and joy. But taking a wing off is quite a big deal for them. And the last thing they want is for anything to go wrong. That's one thing having the owner present when you're taking the wing off his aeroplane, but to have the camera rolling as well is, is quite a new experience for all of us here. <laughs> but they know what they're doing and everyone lends a hand to make sure the job goes smoothly. Except me. I'm standing back and watching. So, right, I'm going to lower this jack. You've got the weight at the tip. I'll leave the jack there just in case we need to put it back. All right? It's moving. What's happening with that vent, Aidan, is it? Yes. Yeah. Up and down a bit, because a bit of paint stripper in there. The wires are coming. It's coming out. A few pipes coming. I've got the paint's coming. It's going. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, nice. Right, we're out. We're clear. Right. There's a trip. There's a trip on the bit. Right, Angie, you can let. What's up? Fuel line here. Put it back far enough to clear that, can we? Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> there, yeah. Yep. Okay. Come back. You yep. can come back this way now if you want yep. to put it down. Well, they made that look easy. There. But don't you, like me, find it surprising yep. that the wing is only held to the airframe by this small spar? This is all that's connecting the wing to the aeroplane. Eight bolts on the top and 10 bolts on the bottom. I kind of envisaged that this part of the wing would go in much deeper into the aircraft, but it seems to work. The wings haven't fallen off yet. There have actually been some devastating cases of wing detachments from PA-28s. That's why there's now a mandatory crack check on the wing spar. Both mine will be done later this week. Well, it's fascinating seeing the uh, the wing coming off there. Um, they're now going to de-rivet the wing skin um, and they've got a new part to put on top of that. I guess it'll have to be resprayed. Um, and then it's onwards with the rest of the annual. So they're making really good progress. Um, I've kind of blocked off a month for all of the work. Um, there's quite a list of things to be done. Once the wing skin was removed, the crack that has prompted this repair was easy to see. Aidan has recorded a detailed video showing the repair of the wing skin, and that's one of a handful of bonus videos from this annual that are now available on my Supporters Club channel. We also see him adjusting my auto gear extension system and repairing a faulty fuel gauge. Signing up to the Supporters Club entitles you to behind-the-scenes content like this and a monthly Zoom hangout with myself and other club members. The channel is now practically my full-time job and Supporters Club members, along with my generous sponsors, keep me going. You can sign up for a one-month free trial to the Supporters Club on my website. If you'd rather just show your appreciation without a monthly commitment, then there's now an option on YouTube to say thanks with a small donation. You'll find this option as a button below the video. This film has taken me three days to produce, and so any contribution really does help keep it sustainable. Thank you for anything you can give. India Victor passed the annual with flying colours, and I look forward to another six months of trouble-free flying, thanks to the dedication of the Aero Anglia team. That's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. Fly safely, my friends.